right, everything's back from the machine shop, so we are ready to reassemble this thing. We're going to start by getting this crank in. We're going to dry fit it in and do our plastic gauge, make sure you check our clearances. Then we'll take it apart and lube everything back up and get it, get it back installed permanently. Let's start there.
Okay, so all five bearings measured out just a little bit larger than 1.5 thousandths. It's a right about one at 1.6 thousandths with the plastic gauge. So I've uh, I've cleaned all the plastic gauge off the crank and the caps. I'm actually going to remove this one last time so I can lube the bearings real good as well as before I do that, I'm going to actually go down and lube the um, the camshaft. Remember the machinist wanted to put the camshaft in, make sure everything lined up so that so it's still in there. I'm gonna, we left it in there, but I'm going to reach down and lube that while I got an opportunity to do that. So that'll be uh, pre-assembled and then we'll get this reinstalled. Okay, now that the camshaft is set, um, I'm going to check the clearance. Um, here's three thousandths. Ooh, that's way too loose. Four thousandths. That's kind of loose. Here's five thousandths. Ooh, that's just right. Just right. So in play is five thousandths, and that is going to be perfect. Okay, next we're going to check our ring gaps, and um, I've already done cylinder one, so I've figured out what I'm doing, and that way it makes me a professional, and that way I can show you. Just kidding. Um, anyway, we're going to start off by taking some. This is a low, low odor metal spirit. Just going to clean out this cylinder. I'm gonna take cylinder one. Actually, let me show you something what uh, my machine has showed me. I took my, I took one of the old pistons, and I took out rings one and two and the oil oil ring, and I put the rings one and two in the oil oil ring slot, and that's gonna give me something I can use to push down and make sure these rings are in there nice and uh, perpendicular, so I can get a true gauge. So, anyway, what I'm gonna do is take uh, this is a. Uh, number one ring, compression ring, it's got a little dot on it. We're going to install it like this. 
I'll get it just barely in there and I'm going to use this to get it nice and square. And then we're looking for either 16 or 17 thousandths. And uh, I'm going to start with 16 and see what... Oh, I think that's money right there. So there's 16 thousandths. Let's see what 17 does. That was really a good fit there. It's just tight. So um, that one's good. I'm not going to do anything with that. This is cylinder two, so I'm going to take this. When I get done, I'm going to put this over uh, in, a, in a stack and make sure this particular one goes back in cylinder number two. Here's uh, the second ring for cylinder number two, hopefully, and uh, it's got a dot right there. I'm going to install a dot facing up with the slot down just so I can get the measurement. Again, this would be 16 or less would be good. The second ring can be tighter. Yep, 16. Okay, so that one's good as well. I'm gonna go ahead and check these, make sure these don't touch. These are my oil rings. Let's get that in there like that. Square it up and I can, I can see it's more than 16, 17 and that can be, it doesn't matter. I can see that one's fine. And then let's get this last one. Yep, and that's the same. Uh, okay, so I'm going to take these and move them on our bench. That these are, these will go with uh, cylinder number two. And I'm going to repeat the process now for the last uh, remaining six cylinders, and get all my make sure my rings don't need to be uh, filed down some. Okay, next we're going to put on the timing set. And um, before I do that, I know there's going to be a lot of questions about all these things that I'm kind of using. Um, first of all, every part gets cleaned. And I'm going to use, I'm using uh, either mineral spirits, this is an odorless mineral spirits. If you ever see me squirt from this bottle, that's what I put in this bottle to help disperse it. That'll clean parts. Also, you know, just regular brake parts cleaner. Use that to spray things. Everything needs to be cleaned and then everything needs to be lubricated. Uh, anytime I'm going to put on a bolt or a fastener, this came with, uh, I believe, the rods. Uh, and I believe I saw another pack of this somewhere else. That my machinist said that this will actually last the entire build or every fastener. We'll get a, a coat of this um, for the fasteners and then um, lubrication uh, anything that's like metal to metal I'm going to use this Lucas there's a lot of different uh, assembly lubes but get you an official assembly lube of some sort uh, this stuff is like honey it just sticks to stuff and uh, it's going to stay on there definitely during the, the initial startup and uh, really protect it uh, along those other so it's either going to be that or if it's uh, maybe something needs some oil this is the oil that I'm going to be using during my break-in, and if the key is it's a straight 30-weight non-detergent oil. You don't want the detergent in there because that's going to basically wipe out all of your assembly lube. You want the assembly lube to stay in there kind of as long for a little while. So I'm going to use this for at least my break-in, you know, maybe 100 miles, 500 miles, something like that, uh, and then this will go away. Or if I need something super thin oiled, I use this. I like this Croil. It's a penetrating oil. It's just so thin it creeps everywhere, but it's called the oil that creeps. But you'll see me use this on certain things. I'm going to use it on this uh, shaft as we start putting that together. So as you see me grabbing these containers, that's what's kind of what I'm doing. Um, and then we're going to start off. Uh, this is keyed already. Here's my new bottom sprocket. Uh, this, this shaft is actually tapered. It's small here to here. The center section is a little bit bigger. And then the very back is even bigger than that. So uh, it slides on real easy. There's a key, key and a keyway there and a slot here for that key. So you just line that up goes back to that final piece there and then I think I'm going to be able to you know what I said I was going to do it and I didn't do it here's my coil heard it bottom out I'm checking to make sure my keyway doesn't pull I don't want if I do I'm gonna line it up with this keyway slot but it looks like I'm gonna 
hit bottom before that keyway comes out. So now we're going. Okay, that is solid. So that's all the way on. Hey. Okay, got the torque, got it torqued down, got the, the dots are still lined up. I mean, you can spin it around, it's going to come back the same. Interesting thing about the timing, all the way the timing thing works, is your crankshaft's got to turn two times every time the crank, the camshaft turns once, and that's why the diameter, or the circumference of this sprocket is twice the size of the diameter, or the circumference of this sprocket, so uh, that's all part of the timing. It's kind of some neat stuff, but this chain's a lot tighter than the other one, so the other one definitely had some stretch. Um, so now. All right, now that we got all this assembled, I'm going to check my uh, run out on my camshaft. Uh, I've got it, I've got it pushed all the way in, and I got the dial indicator set to zero. And when I pry it all the way out, that's ten thousandths. Um, anywhere between one and twelve thousandths is good, so I'm going to call that good. From zero to ten thousandths. Now that we got this done, we're gonna flip this thing over and we're gonna start checking our rod bearing clearances. Okay, time to check the bearing clearance. I'm gonna check every one of these uh, rod bearing clearances, starting with uh, piston number one and cylinder number one. It's upside down, so cylinder one's over here on this side. But um, the dot on the piston is always front of the engine, which is over here. And uh, when they did the assembly of this, they actually put some lines on here. So we'll make sure, and I've marked it number one. Everything's dry. Everything's been cleaned. The seat where this goes has been cleaned, as well as the uh, the bearing. The journal itself's been cleaned, and this thing's ready to assemble. Um, these pistons, I've not put the rings on yet. They're going to slide up into the cylinder. We're going to check the clearance. We're actually going to pull it right back out, and then we're going to move on to number two and three and four, uh, doing a one by one. As you're doing this, you got to keep this crank still. You don't want to crank it down with your plastic gauge in it and then move it because that'll that'll ruin your reading so we're gonna do them one at a time and we'll start by getting this guy installed It's also important to make sure you got this guy on, on correct position. I went ahead and put a black dot on the front. So I'm going to rotate that to the front. Oops, before I do that, i got to put my plastic gauge in. Okay. 
section. This on the front. Per the SCAT, these are SCAT rods. Per the SCAT website, these need to be torqued to 63 foot pounds. Okay, so you can see on this gauge, it's wider than the two thousandths, which means it's closer to the one and a half thousand. So that's probably somewhere in the one and one point eight or eighteen ten thousandths type range, which is in spec. And I'll make note of that on my sheet. And as I go along, I'm going to go ahead and clean off all this plastic gauge. Okay, like I said, I've already done number two, so I'm going to skip to three, four, five, six, seven, and eight.
Okay, time to put on some rings. Expand their game. Okay, expander ring gap is here, the top bottom ring gap's here, and the top ring gap's there. And ring number two, got a little dot there. This one's going to go on the bottom. They say don't spiral these, so I'm going to set that in the groove out there. Where is it? Right there. Expand them. Okay, that one goes on the bottom. This one goes on top, dot facing up. That one's ready here. Alright, so in preparation for putting the pistons in, I'm going to clean all the cylinders uh, with brake clean and then I'm going to oil it with uh, 30 weight oil. Get them, get them all clean. All right, we got a number one cylinder, number one piston. Numbers go to the front. We'll set that down in there. And now that it's in, I'm going to lubricate it now. This has been cleaned and lubed. We need the black dot forward.
There we go. All right, I'll do the rest of these off camera and uh, show you what we look like when we get done. Okay, so now we got the entire bottom end rotating assembly all assembled. And it spins without any interruption. Um, it spins kind of rough because you got the tight rings and all that real gummy uh, assembly lube really uh, puts a little bit of friction on it, but that'll that'll be nice. All uh, orientation on my pistons, I've double checked. All the pistons are facing the right directions. The caps are facing the right directions. There's one thing I noticed in the book. I was going back through the book and just kind of reading through, checking uh, some next steps and some of the steps I did. And there's a diagram that I overlooked. I'm going to turn this engine over. I'm going to show you the rear. Uh, main cap that I messed up and I've already corrected. Okay, so I got the engine upside down. This is the front of the engine. Here's the driver's side. And clearly when I took it apart, I remember these stamps, one, two, three, four, and I thought five here, so I installed it that way. And the book clearly shows that the five stamp is actually on this side. I don't know why they would have done that, but anyway, I've, I've flipped this back around, retorted it, and everything's good. And uh, man, there's a lot of steps on this bottom end, but you gotta get this type of stuff right. This is what's really gonna make this engine purr. And so uh, with that, I'll probably conclude this video. If you enjoy this, if this is something you gained a little bit of insight as to how this stuff is done, I'm not trying to teach you. This is not a how-to video. This is, this is how I did it video. So if you got just a little bit of insight on, uh, on how an engine kind of goes together and this is making sense to you, uh, what I appreciate is just a thumbs up. That lets me know and makes me smile. Jack it up.